السلام عليكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم I just want to first it's good to be good to be home but I just want to um, take a moment to remind all of us about our civic duty I want to take you just for a minute back into the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu during the period of Mecca in the Jahiliyyah before his prophethood there's an event in history we call Hilf al-Fudul. Am I right? What was Hilf al-Fudul? What was it? What was happening? Somebody, anybody. What was happening? Good times, bad times. Bad times, it was rough. That alhamdulillah, in that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joined the people of Mecca even though some of them, they were drug dealers. They were selling prostitutes. They were slave owners. Am I right? They were racists. And the Rasulullah Sallallahu joined them in the confederacy of Medina Hilf al-Fudul for the common good. The companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi they asked him when he lived in Medina. And in Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't just a regular person like he was in the time of Mecca. He was the religious leader. He was the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the legislator. He was a judge. He was the general. And in that circumstance, they said, Ya Rasulullah, if they came to you now, these same people, and they asked you to join them in a confederacy to, to bring some, some benefit to the society. Would you join them now that you're a prophet? Wallahi, according to the hadith, they, he said, even as I am a prophet, I would join them for the common good. So I'm saying that to you now because we have some elections coming up. And some of you might be wondering... As a Muslim, what should I do? And I'm saying to you, alhamdulillah, to do what you can do in the way that you can do it. Politics affects every part of our lives. Every part of our lives. If you want to have a masjid, you have to have a permit. If you want to build something, you need a construction approval from the, the county. If you're going to operate, you need a certificate of occupancy. If you're an immigrant, you need certain laws to allow you to come in. If you're here, you need laws to let you stay. Legislation is a part of everything that happens to us in this community. Some of us are parents. What happens to the school board determines whether our children have to go to the cafeteria during the time when other people are eating their fasting. We were able to prevail to politicians to say our children shouldn't have to be exposed to the cafeteria while they're fasting Ramadan. They should be able to have a place to pray inside the school. That's called politics. Because we had enough power to compel the elected officials to do what we wanted to have done. By the way, don't forget that politics that in America not only affects Americans, but what happens in the politics in America affects other people around the world. And you, usually in a way that we don't like because we haven't established the political relationships. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something that maybe somebody else won't tell you. Politics is about power. Politics is about power. Malcolm X said in a speech, he said, politics means that you control the politics and the politicians of the community that you live in. And, I'm going to paraphrase, but he said, in the North, they are slick. They are, he called them political foxes. And in the South, the Southern racist is a political wolf. Both the wolf and the fox are dogs. He said, but you can determine who will go to the White House and who will go to the dog house. That is what politics can do for you. The politics in our local community, 
we ought to be controlling it. There are enough Muslims in our area that we ought to be able to control some of the politics that goes on in our neighborhood. I'm going to share with you something that maybe we haven't talked about before. There are two things that politics has involved. First, what is it that the politician wants? The, you know, the politician wants something from you. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to give you a word called MOVE, M-O-V-E-E. -E. Politics, politicians want from you money. They come to your masjid because they want your organization. They come, V, they want your vote. E, they want your endorsement if you have political organization, and they want your engagement. Because when something goes down, they want to have a rally and have people come out and say, yeah, I'm with it, so that then they have coverage. M-O-V-E-E, -E, move. Unfortunately, in many communities, all that you get is moved on. The politician comes in, they collect some, some donations. They leverage your organization, they get your vote, your endorsement, your engagement. And then you ask yourself later, well, what did we get out of it? What did we get out of it? I know there are some, some people here, they have a fundraiser at the house. What do we get out of it? Let me tell you what you're supposed to get. And by the way, Anna Amriki as Asli. You know what I'm saying? I'm an original. I know, what I'm, I know this country. What you're supposed to get from your move is politics will give you policies and regulations that are favorable to your interests. Did you hear me? Policies and regulations that are favorable to your interests. There are a lot of people who are cab drivers in the Muslim community. They might be an engineer in, the, in their professional life, but they're a cab driver now. The reality is that politics ought to mean that the politician will put in place policies and regulations that will be favorable to the businesses that we're in. Some Muslims are doctors. There ought to be policies that are favorable to the Muslim doctors so that they can practice their trade without being uh, impacted negatively. That was P. What we need, P-A-C-A-J. Repeat after me. P-A-C-A-J. Now, this is phonetic spelling. That word spells package. We need a package from the politician. Policies and regulations that are favorable to our interests. Appointments. Do you know that in the county that you live in, there are many boards and commissions that control regulations? The politician can say, we want Abdullah and Fatima to be on that board. Do you know there was a community was trying to have a Muslim uh, funeral home? The funeral directors blocked it. All of them were appointed by political officials no Muslim was on the board and all of them blocked the Muslim funeral home because they said it would cut into their business. Because the Muslim doesn't want to be embalmed. They said if you have a funeral home, you have to have embalming. We had to use our politics to change the regulation and put a Muslim on the board of the funeral directors so that then we could get what we needed past appointments. The third thing, every road, every highway, every bridge, every school that's built, every uh, community center that goes up, it's a contract, Muhammad. Who gets the contract? People who have political relationships, that's who get the contract. Now, it, it's not, it, by the way, it's not a pay to play. What it is is you don't even know about the contract because you don't have anybody on the inside. The next A are appointments. I mean, uh, what, appropriations. We have around the country and right now, Muslims have put on uh, state 
uh, regulations, halal bills. Around the country, and Muslims spend money and work with politicians to get halal bill on the, the laws of the state. But they didn't get a dime for appropriations. So there's no money to check to see whether or not the person selling halal, even though they're certified by the government, is it really halal? There ought to be appropriations, just like Jews have appropriations for the kosher. Somebody goes in and inspects them and trains them and certifies them. That's your money. Those appropriations ought to be determined by us. Who's going to get appropriation? And the last are jobs. You look around the state and around the county, politicians say, I want to hire you. You're going to be my uh, deputy director for so-and-so-and-so. Oh, we need an IT specialist. And I can, uh, I can just say, I want to hire uh, Brahim. That's who, I, that's who I want. Wallahi, the package that we want from politicians, I'm closing. Policies and regulations that are favorable, appointments, contracts, appropriations, and jobs. That's the package. When you go out and vote and the community leaders, I believe they're the ones who should tell you. By the, by the way, don't go out and say, oh, you know, I like so-and-so as my candidate. Because I saw them, they would were were look very friendly. And the way they said, salamu alaikum, when they came was very authentic, I'm going to vote for her. What I learned, there is no Islam without a community. There's no community without a leader, and there are no leaders without followers. In politics, if you want to have power, you need to follow the leader. So you find out who the leadership in your community says is the person that we're networking with to get our package, and then vote for them. And you can ask all the questions you want, but on election day, look at how the country is so divided. Any group uh, that's organized and, and, and is focused can make the difference in an election. Look how many candidates the Democrats have. If every one of them voted for whoever they want to, the block vote of Muslims could make the difference in the election if you'll get behind the leader. So, alhamdulillah, I'm saying to you today, You want to see the help of Allah when we come together around the issues that affect this deen, Allah can make us successful. Subhanallah wa bihamdik wa shadu an la ila indh wa astaghfirullah wa natubu ilayk wa al asr inna al insana la fi husr illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.